here to help us uh, talk about the specifics of signing day. And as a matter of fact, he's still got some work to do before February 4th is BYU outside linebackers coach Kelly Papinga, special teams coordinator. Kelly, welcome back to the set. Thanks for having me back, guys. Are you, back. Uh, are you surviving the recruiting period? Oh, man. We're, you know, got a couple more days. So we got our official weekend, um, big official weekend. We'll have about 25 guys in this weekend. But uh, we got two more days to hit it hard, Wednesday and Thursday. And then uh, off for a fun weekend to celebrate all the guys that are going to be coming. We got about six to seven guys, I think, that are uncommitted that we're still trying to work on right now. So it's going to be a big weekend, especially for those guys. Um, but also to hold on to the guys that we have committed as well. So You know, I've, I've, I've actually forgot about that um, with, with, with how BYU does the recruiting trips. They don't bring the guys on, you know, individually or at, at bunches. Yeah. You know, they, you guys do it, you know, all at one time. Have you guys seen benefits from doing it that way? Yeah, I think that, you know, what, what comes of it is that we got a bunch of guys in that uh, know each other for the most part. And then if there's a guy that's uncommitted, and this happened last year, um, Uriah Leatawa. Leatawa. I always have a hard time saying his last time. But he's committed to Stanford. He came in, you know, he was open to, you know, kind of consider BYU, but he was pretty committed to BYU or to Stanford and uh, just getting around the guys and uh, being able to get to know him and see what kind of guys he's going to be around in the future. That's really one of the main reasons why we do it is so that they can get to know the guys that they're going to be playing with. The parents can get to know the parents that are going to be around when nice. they're going to school. And, uh, and then it's just a big celebration. But we found that it does help the guys that are uncommitted or are still exploring that these guys that are committed and that are you know, pretty much coming are helping these other, they're helping us recruit these guys that we're still trying to get committed to the program. Let's strategy. Di yeah, strategy let's, with let's everything. Let's yeah. dive into the ups and downs of, of the recruiting Ooh. trail. Okay, oh, you yeah. brought up Uriah Leatow. That was a yeah. big get. Huge. And a last-minute commit going from Stanford to BYU. What's the, what's the immediate reaction of you and your coaching staff when something like that happens? Yeah, it was, uh, that was, pretty, uh, it was pretty special. It was one of the um, first times we've had that experience here at BYU because for the most part, our guys commit early. Um, our class is filled pretty, pretty quick. And this time of year, it's more of just making sure the guys are still with us, holding on to them. Um, but with him, and this year, there's even more. And I think that's a good thing. I'll talk about that here in a second. But um, – he was uh, he was calling us on the phone and just kind of talking to us what was going on, and then the next thing we know, he's talking to us and a fax came through and it was his NLI and we nice. just the office Party. blew it, office blew up <laughs> yeah. man and it was I mean it was fun and uh, Coach Two J um, he was instrumental in getting that guy here he did a really good job of recruiting that guy and uh, without Coach Two J and their relationship I don't think. Um, we would have had a chance at the end like that. So nice, nice. That was that. That's a big win for you guys. Let's let's think about the opposite. Let's put yourself in Stanford shoes. Yeah. And and that happens. What what are you guys going through mindset? Do you guys try and, and scramble and try to get maybe another kid to fill yeah. that position? Um, you know, it's uh, it's man, it's hard. And you get a call from a recruit. And it's, hey, what's going on? And immediately you can tell by the tone oh, on the other side of what's going on with the, hey, coach, uh, just calling to let you know I'm <laughs> going to such and such place. You're like, oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. And, you know, you're just thinking, man, all this hard work. Um, but you know what? It's, it's part of the deal. And uh, like I've told recruits before, you won't be the you, – you're not the first one and you won't be the last one. And that's just how this business goes. And – um, you hopefully build a good enough relationship with that kid that if down the road, if something does happen and yeah. for some reason he wants to end up transferring or, you know, maybe a coaching change happens and he doesn't like the new coach that comes in or whatever it may be, that down the road he would consider coming back to Yeah, BYU. you don't want to burn bridges. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that yeah. happens sometimes. You know, sometimes I mean, I've never done this, and I don't think a coach on our staff does this, but I've heard of other kids when they say – to a coach, hey, you know, I'm, I'm deciding to go to BYU, then they start bashing BYU and they start, you know, they get upset at the kid and, oh, yeah. you know, and so I just, you know, I don't think that it's not going to help in any way doing that. And so I just, I try to stay away from that. I will ask him though, hey, you know, what could we have done better? You know, is there, you know, is there any way that you would be able to reconsider? I try to find a way if there's, and that's right. actually what happened with Uriah. Interesting. He, he had committed and he'd called us and told us he'd committed. And then we kind of, hey, well, just come on the visit, man. Just come on the visit. You know, let's see what happens. You know, you don't, you don't have to commit to anything. And, right. you know, he came, came on the visit and the rest is history. So. Nice. Kelly Papinga, BYU outside linebackers coach and recruiting extraordinaire <coughs> with us on set here uh, in Studio B. Let's say, okay, I, I have, I've always wanted to be recruited by BYU football. That didn't happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, I can but, see why. I can see <laughs> that body frame right there. Hey, you might be a great kicker. We could try out. 
Wow. Hey, we're looking for a punter right hey, now. Punters, so, see, you want to yeah. be a punter. Punters are people too, hey, not, not I kickers. I am 170 pounds of lean muscle. Okay. <laughs> Solid right here. Yeah. Hey, here is, see, hey, coach, coach, this is, this is a large. His shirt right this now is, is a large. Medium. This is a medium. It's a medium. Oh, he's, medium. He's, he's a small. That's why if he has a small, oh, then you'll goodness. be able to see yeah. the full frame. Don't Dang. let the don't let the medium fool you. Shoot, man. All right. Well, uh, now that I've lost all confidence in myself ever. <laughs> Let's say I'm a 6'4", 230-pound linebacker with 4'5 speed, right up your alley. And I'm very interested in BYU, one of my top three schools. What is your recruiting pitch to me as a four-star linebacker? Yeah, well, I think, you know, it really depends on what the kid wants. Um, a lot of times the kid really just wants the football experience. And so then you sell the football experience. So then – I talk about the tradition of BYU, the winning of BYU, the bowl game history, the conference championship history, even though we're not really aligned with that anyway. I, th I think it does have an effect on the kids to know that, you know, I think it's 21 or 22 conference championships that BYU's won, and I think it's 29, 30. I'm looking at our media relations guy right now. <laughs> Do you remember what it is? 30, 33, 33, 33 bowl games, which is crazy. I, there's not many schools in the country that can say that. Thank you, Brett Pine. Yeah. And then just the consistent winning that Coach Mendenhall has had since he's been here winning 90 games in 10 years. That's an average of nine games this season and going into all that. But then if I'm selling to a linebacker, I'm saying this. Listen, you got – you know, my brother, Brady Papinga, outside backer. You got Brian Kill, outside backer. You got David Nixon, outside backer. You got now the last streak. Even though Ziggy is drafted as a D lineman, he started as an outside backer. So, I'll, yep. I'll, you know, we, you we, 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 use, we, use, you we use Ziggy in both spots. We say Ziggy, D lineman, and outside backer. And then you have Cal Banoy, Alani Fua this year, Spencer Hadley, um, and I think Bronson will be the next. So, in my opinion, we'll have four guys after next year with Bronson, four guys that have been invited to the, to the NFL Combine. Um, which there's not many schools I think that can say that for a particular position um, in that, you know, span that they'll have, you know, guys invited to the NFL Combine and have that chance to uh, um, play at the next level. And so I'll, I'll sell that part hard. Um, but like I said before, it all depends on what the kid's looking for. It's, if it's the academics, like Uriah, it was really important to academics. So we had him sit down with one of our academic advisors. Mm. Actually, it was a professor, uh, Jeff Sheets. I don't know if you guys know Jeff Sheets. Jeff, I love stud. Jeff. And he sat down with him, and he explained everything, you know, BYU, Stanford. And he did a great job with that. And then um, – if it's, you know, the spiritual side, say it's a kid that's, you know, coming from California, that is that is LDS, but he's really never been around the LDS yep. environment, and, see, and he's craving that, and he's searching for that, and then we, you know, we, um, we sell that part. So really, it's really specific on the kid um, and trying to sell the, you know, the whole program, you know, how it fits each, each kid in particular. That's, that's, a, that's a great point to say, <coughs> you know, this is a pipeline right now. If, you, if you're a linebacker, you, you do want to go to BYU, especially – um, the style of defense that you guys play, um, you know, run a 3-4 system the same as a lot of NFL yep. teams. and that's another part um, also. That's, yep. that's another for you. So what, when, when it comes to uh, evaluating a kid, you know, like a, like a Kyle Van Noy, I mean, you can look at tape and things like that, but how do you know that, hey, this kid is going to be a second-round draft pick or this kid is probably not going to be anything? Yeah, so – the evaluation first starts with the highlight. We, you know, they'll get, they'll send in the highlight. Hey, check out the highlight. Then we'll get game film. Then we'll bring him on the, um, bring him on campus for a, what's a going to camp? You know, yeah. camp evaluation. Like your junior day. Yeah, exactly. Like a camp evaluation. Really, in my opinion, that's where I get to know exactly what the kid is. And then also when you go out and see him in person, see him work out and see him in a game and practice and all that. But when I can get my hands on the kid and I can run him through my drills and the things that we do um, in our defense, and I can see how he's going to fit our scheme. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, I'm looking for, you know, how well does this kid move laterally? How good of a get off does he have, you know, when he's getting off the ball? Um, what type of hands does he play with? Is he good at the point of contact? Um, does he have good hips? Yeah. You know, even DBs, yeah. I know DBs are talking about, Gotta even linebackers, we, we drop our guys into coverage, and so yeah. those dudes have to have good hips, and they can't be tight yeah. and all wound yeah. up tight. Reference so. Alani yeah. Fua yeah. against yeah, exactly. Houston, making yeah. that game-winning pick. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, I mean, Alani's done a really good thing. I mean, the interception that he had against Memphis in the game, which was a huge uh, yeah. momentum swing for us. So That's, um, that, this, is, this is really good for fans to hear because I around the community, I'll hear fans that say, Oh, so and so and so and so offered this kid a scholarship. Yeah. How come BYU yeah. hasn't offered this kid a scholarship? Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm like, well, you're just looking at highlight tapes, right? Yeah. You're just looking at film. Obviously, it's going to be the best plays, yep. right? The top plays, and you don't know really competition. Yeah. And so it's good for fans to hear that. Hey, we're evaluating more than just a a interception return for uh, you know a touchdown. Yeah. I need to see if this kid has good hips yep. and, and good feet because. 
at the end of the day, you know, he may fit well, you know, at another program, but not going to be good for us. Yeah, exactly. And so I probably know who you're talking about. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's hard. It is, it's a, recruiting is a, it's a, it's a hard thing to do because it is a long process. And, Sometimes you're going to make really good decisions, and sometimes you're not going to make very good decisions. Sometimes you're 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 going to make uh, mistakes, and you're going to miss on a guy. And sometimes it's going to work both ways. Sometimes you're yeah. going to miss on a guy thinking he's a player, and sometimes you're going to miss on a guy thinking, oh, this guy is not a player, and ends up you know blossoming, becoming a really good player. So it's really a crapshoot. When it comes down to it, we're going to sign 25 guys next Wednesday, and who knows what they're going to do, you know? And we had, I mean, shoot, you think about, I think it was the 2010 class. We had some of the top recruits in the country, and. Yeah. A lot of those guys, to be brutally honest, didn't didn't quite didn't pan, pan out, out the yeah. way that we thought they were going to, and the stars and all that didn't you know align to you know what's you know this I don't know if it's scouts.com or whoever gives the yeah. stars, but it's just really what it comes down to. You have to be really thorough as a coach, especially at BYU, because it's not just the football aspect that you're looking into. It's right. academically, we have an academic standard that we have to reach, and then we have the honor code that we have to uh, find kids that are willing to live that and try to live it uh, as much as they possibly can, and. Uh, and you know it's it's a tough little it's a, at times a tough sales pitch, but at sometimes it's or I say most of the time, it's guys that are are wanting it and are really intrigued by it and uh, you know are thinking that they're going to thrive in an environment like BYU. Yeah, it's always this time of year that you see the the tweets on social media about Marcus Mariota being a two or three star yeah. quarterback and JJ Watt was not yeah. recruited by anybody. Walk on, he was yeah. a walk on. You just don't know. There there is certainly that that guessing element, but. You control, <laughs> as what we're, we're learning now, you control as, as much as you can. And so with what you've been able to control this year and what you're seeing develop uh, for the next recruiting class, where is your excitement level with BYU football recruiting in 2015? Yeah, I, I, I'm really excited what Coach Holiday has done and Coach Beck has done uh, down in Texas. They have done a really good job down there, uh, really tapping into a, a talent pool that we haven't uh, been able to um, you know, get a lot of guys from that area. And so they've done a really good job down there. Coach Holiday has built great relationships over the years being, you know, at UTIP and Mississippi State and coaching at those – or recruiting at in Texas. And so the the receivers and the running backs and the offense alignment um, and the defense alignment, the guys that we're bringing out of that area um, this year, um, I think Cougar fans are going to be super excited about. And then, you know, on top of that, just the guys that um, – the skill guys that are coming out of the state of Utah this year – um, that I believe that we're going to get are um, they're very they're they're the Brian Logans of the world uh, <laughs> instead no, of being man. but instead of being five six they're six two right, so right, yeah. we got we got right, a, little, a little upgrade yes. a little upgrade but yes. what people don't know about Brian this dude was a baller man uh, baller you right make me turn purple serious. man we uh, seriously we have we have we have cut ups of Brian Logan just freaking dominating <laughs> and so you know a uh, corner comes in we're showing blushing. we're showing clips of Brian. And uh, wow. the good things that he did. So, you know, a lot of people might think he's, you know, some slappy. He wasn't a slappy. I, Brian, yeah, I was. Brian, Brian was a, a baller, man. I'm a has-been, man. Yeah. You know, I did things, okay, some, you know, like 30% of the time. That's, that's where you have all my cut-ups where all my best plays. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but Brian no, the is skill. sliding money underneath the table I know, right, right now. Yeah. Like, here you go, here you go, But bro. there is some really good skill coming out of Utah this year, um, especially on the defensive side, um, that we have never seen um, – and it'll be really good to get these guys on campus and get them in the program. And I think they're going to have a chance to play right away next year. Let's talk about the uh, the new guy on staff, Frank Wittrich. Yeah. A um, lot of excitement about what he's going to bring as a strength and conditioning coach. What do you anticipate that Frank will bring to the program? And, and maybe what changes has he already implemented? Yeah. he uh, Man, it's been just talking to the players because we're out on the road. And I had a chance this morning to go in. Uh, work out and watch from a distance because he doesn't – not that he doesn't want us around, but he does think we're kind of a distraction <laughs> as coaches. Yeah. And he wants his staff to get out there and do the work and coach the guys up and for us just to sit back and be, really be football coaches and worry about mm -hmm. the football part of it. He'll worry about the strength and conditioning and what he calls football performance. Football performance, yes. Um, and uh, I just listened – so he pulled up – when I walked in this morning, he was pulling up the offense uh, – The we call it our uh, – our bigs, our line and D line, they were in just finishing up their lift, and he was getting after them, and in a good way, yeah. um, of talking about the workout and their their mindset of coming in today. And it's been a while. Um, Coach Omer did that when I played here, um, you know. And over time, you know, Coach O, he got a little old and whatever. I mean, I love the guy, but you know, it just it it just happened. And uh, but the energy that he was talking to those guys with today, it was impressive, and just the discipline that he demands 
and uh, the exactness, things that really Coach Mendenhall emphasizes a lot. Um, we're going to get that, you know, out of our guys now in the weight room as well. And not that it didn't happen in the past. I think it's just now going to happen with a different voice, uh, with a guy that's bringing a little bit different philosophy than we've ever seen. I mean, we're never going to power clean. We're never going to snatch. We're not going to do any Olympic yeah, lifts. Yeah, he said no Olympic lifts. It's, I'm uh, jealous. Yeah, oh and so, my but he's doing things. You know, our guys hear that and they're like, oh, it's going to be easy. I mean, they are getting their tails kicked. And uh, – it's fun to hear the players, their excitement about it, their energy about it. And I think it's bringing a new energy to our program and an energy that we've needed for a while um, uh, to help this program take another step forward. That's, that's good. That's exciting to hear. And, and you know, I, I think especially coming off of, um, you know, kind of the, the, the loss and how you guys finished the season, um, uh, you know, the, the fighting and everything like that. So it's kind of good to kind of just turn the page, start fresh, and no better way to start fresh than to have somebody new. But I talked to you earlier this week, and you said some pretty interesting numbers and stats as far as what Frank is going to bring to the table and, and, and what he's done with his career as far as the injuries. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so when he came into our interview process, we, we had talked to him about having issues with, uh, you know, hamstrings, having issues with, you know, growing abductors, adductors. And, uh, you know, he came in and said right away, he said, you know, over the last two years at UNT, zero soft tissue injuries. And when he said that, I like looked at him, dude, you got to be lying. Right, right. And he said, no. <laughs> He's like, zero so soft tissue injuries, soft tissue injuries, and, uh, which is super impressive. And, uh, and then he talked about ACLs. And he, I think he said two ACLs would have been off, which had been off of um, contact. So that means, you know, a helmet or, you know, a guy getting tackled or whatever. But uh, really impressive to hear those numbers. And then talking about labrums, yeah. uh, I think he's, he said, like, no labrums over the last two years as yeah, well. Yeah, it's like zero muscle tears, yeah. things like that. And so it's just, I mean, to hear those numbers and hear if we can keep our guys healthy and keep them on the field to compete, um, that just gives us a better chance, especially with the injury bug that we hit this last year. And, you know, so, I don't know what it was with the ankles this year. But <laughs> yeah, what in the <laughs> world? Ankles, yeah. man. So, but uh, he's going to do a really good job, I believe, of, you know, helping our guys stay healthy. Uh, also getting, you know, bigger, faster, and stronger, and uh, helping our guys uh, uh, take that next step that we need to to take this season. Kelly Papinga, BYU outside linebackers coach, special teams coordinator on BYU Sports Nation. Thanks for the time, Coach. All right, guys. We wish you the on. best of luck on the road uh, and your final travels this recruiting week, and uh, don't sprain an ankle or get in a situation <laughs> where you have a soft tissue tear. There you go. I'll try to stay away from those things, man. <laughs>